Hello folks, Jason Chrisman, JC's Bees. Today I want to discuss four things that could cause your bees to die during the winter. The very first thing that could kill your bees during the winter is disease from varroa mites. Varroa mites do infect our bees with many different diseases and pathogens and they weaken our bees in the dormant season, winter. That's why um, you hear a lot of beekeepers stressing about treating your mites and that needs to be done in a timely manner. You need to treat for varroa mites in the fall. That way, you're sure come winter, you've got healthy bees um, in the colonies. It gives the bees enough time by treating in the fall, they're able to raise a new batch of bees to go into winter, and those bees will be your healthy bees. So varroa mites, that's definitely um, top of the list if you ask me. Um, the second thing is lack of food. Yes, if you don't have enough food stores in your colony and you're not providing some kind of a supplement, and I talked last week about the Hive Alive Fondant Patty, that is a great supplement for bees, absolutely wonderful. Um, so yes, food, that would be number two, lack of food. Number three is condensation or moisture in the colony. That drips on the bees and the bees die. Um, a lot of people believe that they got to put all this insulation and, and different things on their bee boxes to keep the bees warm. Well, it's my personal belief and experience that I think um, bees can handle the cold. I know for a fact um, I don't wrap my colonies and they do just fine. Um, the biggest thing that kills them is moisture. The cold air enters the hive, it rises, hits that warm cluster, and then it can condensates on the inner cover of the colony and then that condensation drips back on the bees now that's one of the reasons they say you should tilt your colonies slightly forward in the winter and a condensation on the ceiling or the inner cover will run to the front of the hive and run down the front wall versus dripping from the center of the inner cover and landing on your bees so wet bees they're definitely going to be dead bees condensation is number three and number four is going to be when you get into a cold spell for a long extended period of time and the bees aren't able to move, break cluster, and move to a new area in the hive where there's more food. Say they've stuck in this one place for a long time and they've ate all the uh, stored food in them frames or all of the fondant patty above that area. You, they need to move, but the weather's not providing. That one there, I think, number four, I think it's low on the list if you're providing some kind of supplement and you do your due diligence in the fall and do a lot of uh, feeding. But it's definitely a possibility that the weather is just extremely cold for a long period of time and the bees aren't able to move and they die. Um, that's not something you see a whole lot, but it does happen. So there you go, four reasons or four things that could cause your bees to die in the winter time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna share um, some of the videos that I'm gonna be producing this year with you. So you know what to look forward to. So let's go in where it's a little bit warmer. I think we're only sitting at like 28 right now and my ears and my bald head can feel it. So let's go in where it's warmer and I'll tell you the game plan for the year. I'm cold on a bald head. Woo, my ears are froze. Okay, so before I share my little list of projected videos um, for the year, um, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to share something with the Ladybug fans out there. My wife had this shirt made, and I'm gonna pull a picture up here so everybody can check it out. And what it says is, every snack you make, every meal you bake, every bite you take, I'll be watching you. And then it says Ladybug, of course. But that was cute. Um, Ladybug, she's not a fan of the shirt. She doesn't like everybody to know about her food habits. So, she's not really talking to me today. Matter of fact, she's usually here by my side on my computer chair, right next to me on the floor. She's out on the couch. So now for my list. And this is not going to be cover every single video I'm going to produce. It's just some of the topics um, I will cover. And it was kind of intrigued by a follower 
who asked a comment or a question this week. Any plans to try something new or experiments with bee stuff this year? So that kind of intrigued me to put this list together and here I am, I'm gonna share it with you. So as far as new stuff that I want to do this year, um, it's not completely new, but I would like to finish up on the Saracel double decker frames. Um, if you remember last year, I got the uh, Saracel double decker frames. They're similar to a Ross round frame, but you can take two frames and stack them. And it's equivalent to a full deep frame as far as the depth of it. So um, really want to continue on with them. Um, I know time I got them into the box and got them on a hive, it was fall and there wasn't much of a nectar flow to get them drawn out. So that's definitely in the plans. I've also got, um, and I haven't yet to share them with you guys, but a couple months back, um, I got some new bottom boards from Saracel. Um, hive Defender bottom boards, I believe they're called. Um, they're to help with robbing. Um, so I want to play around with those um this year i also want to uh get me one of the instavaps from the robbies and play around with that and sh see how convenient it is to not have a cord so that'll be a lot of fun um as far as other new stuff i do have plans to do some live streams probably over on my patreon to get started um i'm not wanting to go uh, big time with the live streams just because it seems very time demanding um, And I just don't have the time to do that. So if I could do half hour 45 minutes, maybe an hour um, Maybe once a month or something and I don't I don't want to copy any of the people that are already doing live streams either They've already got their own niche and to step on their toes just doesn't feel right to me, but maybe that's just because uh, That's the way I am so that's that um other bee stuff that was all new stuff that i would like to cover um other bee stuff that i would like to cover this year is i want to get some hives up on our leased farm or the beef cattle or grass-fed beef um, that's completely organic up there it's just shy of 200 acres and um i've had bees there in the past and then i decided to pull them all off and bring them back here now i think it's time i need to divvy them up leave some here put some in a few different places up there and and see what becomes of it i know the farm is an excellent excellent nectar producer and i'll explain more about the relationship with the bees and and the uh and the cattle and all that stuff in another video but i definitely uh inquire everybody to hang around for that because that's going to be a very interesting video at least i find it very interesting how they work together um i want to do a video on uh planting buckwheat and give some tips for beekeepers um i don't want to go too much into depth with that now but um i will give you a little sneak peek um into that video by uh saying this um buckwheat stops producing nectar after the sun hits it and it starts to warm up it dries it up there's no more nectar for the day um so i'm going to give you some tips that will extend the nectar flow further into the day and and i think that can be helpful for everybody so um i know a lot of people don't like the buckwheat honey but it's a great supplement for the bees and if you sell honey then you know it's always good to have that extra um type of honey on your table and the buckwheat is great during the cold and flu season um I want to do a video on one year after with Apame and show how I still feel about it. Has anything changed? Um, do I still have the same likes? Um, is there any more dislikes about uh, Apame? So I want to do that in a video. I also want to do an update on the Rio Link Go PT Plus. Um, I don't know, I just thought that would be kind of fun to share with everybody. And then um, in the off season, until bee season actually kicks off, I'm gonna be sharing some um, videos on just 3D printing. There probably won't be much mentioned about bees in these particular videos, but I'm just trying to fill, uh, fill my weekly spot here with, with some content, folks, and I hope it's not stepping on anybody's toes or nobody's offended by it. Um, my 3D printing videos, I wanna show some of the modifications that I'm making to my Creality Ender 3. 
And then another topic I would like to cover is building a dry box for the filament. And that's something I am actually working on right now. The printer's in the other room running, printing out pieces for it. So um, I think there's a lot of great discussion in some of these videos that I mentioned. And I hope you're excited about some of them too, folks. Um, if you have any questions or comments or maybe suggestions for other videos, leave them down below, folks. I appreciate you um, for taking the time to follow along to this point in the video. And at this point, I think I'm going to sign out and I'm going to go get me some coffee. You guys have a great week and we'll see you back here next Sunday. Thanks for watching JC's Bees.